Hello and welcome to another edition of Motor Capital. And this is a continuation from last week. And the week before, I did a repeat. But this is uh, Noel Night. Parking $40 around the District Detroit where Little Caesars Arena is. The Red Wings play, and now we can officially call them the Detroit Pistons. Uh, they play here also. Uh, there's a pedestrian tunnel to the parking deck. And there was an event tonight, an ultimate, ultimate fight night kind of thing, UFC, whatever. They kind of made a ghost ad there. Uh, looking inside the arena, it's quite a, a marvel. Yeah, UFC is what's going on. I didn't get the official title. And kind of like a barricade here. So they kind of keep things uh, protected. Okay, now the talk is, is they're going to tear those down. Those buildings there. Uh, Harry's is still around though. And they certainly are in a good position. Uh, ducked inside Harry's and lo and behold, uh, the fight night was on. This was crazy. This was happening literally just hundreds of yards away. And this was live, or at least the for first portion of it was. And then it went to like pay-per-view. Here's a look at the menu, or the specials they have here. They have drink specials also. Looks like a guy from United Kingdom. Yeah, Little Caesars Arena you see in the background, so. Yeah, they have quite a few events, certainly, at the new LCA, as the acronym seems to have caught on. Ford Field. Yeah, now we're the city with the closest uh, parameter for the four major sports teams. They're literally walking distance from each other. Okay, so Woodward, Main Street, Detroit. What I want to do while I'm doing this, I'm at the lower part of the Noel night. There was the, the feature. Uh, but I wanted to come down here to pick up some piston tickets. Here's a newfangled bike rack, so that's good to see. Uh, well, peeking in one of the restaurants here, yeah, Mike's Pizza. I'm doing this, and then a Mexican place. I'm doing this rather quick. Okay, the box office. So I'm gonna see what they have. I wanna get the cheapest tickets in the building. Red Wings are expensive. But Pistons uh, can be had, the lo it's dynamic pricing, but this is the, as low as it goes, $14. Uh, so I picked up those tickets, and I'm going to go with my friend Jim. We actually went to the game. Uh, the Pistons laid an egg. Uh, but that was the game they lost seven in a row, or that was the seventh in a, a losing streak. After that, they won a couple in a row, so. They want to preserve this granite block. Uh, Fine Arts, they haven't done much with that building. That's been like that for a long time. Faux Lucky, Vietnamese, have not tried their food yet, but that's a new restaurant. It took over for, I forget the name offhand, but sometimes they raise their the lease rates on these places and you get new tenants that way unfortunately uh gray ghost here's another place i have not set foot inside but it looks pretty cool even a ghostly type sign they got there but that's like a bar restaurant looking at, at some of these vacant buildings this needs to change, certainly, and that's where urban planning comes.
comes in. You have good proximity to downtown. This building, yeah, they started to do some work on this one. So that's a good sign. What a classic uh, design, you know, architecture there. Beautiful curves. These buildings have nice balconies, the Scott. And quite a few millennials, I believe, inhabit the building. I'm not sure what the vacancy or occupancy rate is. But there seems to be a shortage of affordable housing uh, for people in the downtown midtown area as a lot of these millennials are working for Dan Gilbert and so forth in some of the office buildings downtown. Here they're advertising, this was for the fall, but even now Traverse City is pretty hot. Uh, Q line in operation. This is like our first attempt at bringing back the streetcars from a day gone by. And look at the uh, crowd on that one, standing room only. Coming soon, S-O-M-A, I'm not sure what, south of Maine. Uh, okay, yeah, look it, so they're going to develop this. This will be, it's a black hole right now. There's nothing there, but uh, there'll be something there. It's a piece of the puzzle. Here's some interesting lighting. Every uh, window has kind of like a different shade there. It's the green light district. And Detroit has that, that steam kind of thing. That's a weird way of, or an old-fashioned way of heating, but we see those steam vents uh, in several parts of the city blowing their top. Uh, yeah, some people on their balconies there. So it's nice, this Main Street Woodward, Main Street Detroit, I mean, right here. It's, it's happening. There's a Christmas book I got from my sister. The book says, The Dream Is Now. Yeah, it'd be nice if, if we could wait, but what's the fun in that? It's time to have that dynam dynamic city that we all want right now. It'll only get better for our children and children's children kind of a thing. But anyways, yeah, this is Noel Night. Now I'm just getting into the Midtown area, but I got around this area a little bit late. Missed all the excitement they had at the Detroit Institute of Arts. Unfortunately, there was a, a shooting there between some high school kids over a football game. Some people got injured, so it wasn't pretty. Here, I like the lighting here in Union Street. Life is too short to drink cheap beer. Ooh, look at that beer. Rogue. And they got a moose. And then your choice of desserts. Look at that. Yum, yum. There's a photo op there. And the hop cat. They see 130 taps. That's quite a few there. You could spend all night and the next day trying them all, couldn't you? Here the Whitney. And what uh, a lumber baron on this place. But I want to check the ghost bar, so we're going to go up to the third level. And how ornate is this? This is just... Beautiful, and what's nice with Noel Night, everything's open, and then they have entertainment all the time. I recognize her, and they have dining rooms, kind of neat little wings off the things, smaller, probably Christmas party type stuff.
nice just to get a tour of this place. Well, checking out their desserts here too. They look scrumptious. They have some nice artwork adorning the walls and certainly the Christmas decor is up. And I think the, the food is reasonably priced. Uh, but just a, a gorgeous place. Everything is going to be all right. I think Thornetta Davis has a blues tune where she says that. And I think that's for her lawyer firm that she works, kind of works for, Mike Morse. I'll have to check that ad out again, but she is certainly a blues diva in, uh, in Detroit. Well known, well liked. And the Christmas wreath is up. Benny N. Napoleon is the sheriff of Wayne County. And I parked up in the north end area, so I got a little walking to do. Uh, Noel Night is just a fantastic event, and I didn't do it justice by any means uh, because there's so much live music and, and, and tons of venues that, well, everyone would have a different perspective, different POV, point of view, and you would have yourself a grand old time doing it your own way, taking the detour. But there's so much to do, it's hard, you, there's like no way you can capture it all. You have to kind of look at the program. Actually, you have to get it online now because they just have a map that they hand out. But uh, when you go online, you can get the different uh, performers and what venue they're performing at and kind of put out a game plan. Here's some nice detail here on these like concrete mold things that they put these things. I'm not. These are pretty wild. Uh, they go in there, they're like almost sculpted out. And then we got two guards, guards in front. And Wayne State University, certainly an anchor in the Midtown area, along with the cultural attractions we have here, like the library. Knowledge is power. That is something I have not heard every, anyone being able to refute that. Uh, it's hard to come up with arguments. Haven't heard one yet. Knowledge is power. And the enjoyment of the art. So, yeah, and they may have had like the Christmas caroling here. A friend told me that in years past, and I know they would close Woodward, but because of the queue line, Woodward Avenue remained open so the Salvation Army sim sinkers excuse me used to be right there uh, in the middle of Woodward and they were kind of they would round out uh, Noel night ringing the bell Detroit Historical Museum and that was open nothing stops Detroit yeah, we seem to get a, take a lot of hits, but uh, yeah, we haven't really fallen down yet. We hit bankruptcy, but yeah, maybe that's laying pretty much on the mat. But we got up. So, all right, gas prices. We got a Domino's here. And that's the way back to 94. Carhartt has a nice store there and an old dealership. There's where I parked. So just before the stroke of midnight. I like these townhouses on the left. Um, that's classic style. All right, west back 94, and call it a night. Okay, now let's see what we got next.
No, I had a long s- snooze. All right, M. Dot moving ahead with plan to rip out I-375. Well, this is a good idea to take out this freeway and make it a more walkable environment. This look at that wide expanse, you know, off to the uh, Renson. It was maybe two mile, three mile. Okay, but they did a study. I'm have this on my laptop and I'm not doing this too well but you'll see that the proposed thing will have a nice green space there and this is like urban planning this was good to see for sure and then planners today take a different attitude valuing pedestrian street life and walkable neighborhoods over the movement of cars and traffic and then here if you design cities for cars and traffic you get cars and traffic if you design cities for people in street life you get people in street life so thanks john gallagher for that nice expression and i couldn't agree more uh, so he's doing the urban planning thing too so i i have kind of an ear or a eyesight for for watching that because i checked the freep.com site out oh a little snow factor a little glitchy thing and another night's good night's sleep and off to chicago well actually i'm gonna go to uh, whitmore lake and this is whitmore lake high school and rudolph steiner is where my niece Lucy goes to school, but when they have a big event, they use the auditorium over here. But they have a community pool. They have nice soft lighting, the way they baffle that. Now, they had soup beforehand. I'm going to grab a bowl, uh, $5. This is a fundraiser for the school. And these are the different ones you could choose from. But we're going to see like a Christmas recital. Now, I'm checking out these... Michigan things because I'm going to do a cut out of Michigan so I wanted to see how the upper peninsula and the lower peninsula how they kind of kept them together but they kind of made it a little thicker in the middle there uh, so I did get the squash soup and uh, what a that was very tasty now under the wraps here is the cookie thing they have a, a cookie sale that's part of the fundraiser too it's ten dollars for a baker's dozen so that would be 13 okay Whitmore Lake High School this was back in the day so they had the varsity pictures and it's an international we'll check this out in a little bit okay class of 1961 that was probably at a different venue this certainly is a more modern one the janitor had a nice Christmas tree going okay there's Finland China Spain, Austria, I'm not sure what that one, Turkey, U.S. for sure, Canada, Brazil, Germany, South Korea, Switzerland, Thailand, two sheets, Russia, Italy. Uh, okay, so we're going to listen to some cool music from Rudolf Steiner High School.
by a wonderful choral composer, arranger by the name of Jay Althaus. And so whenever I see a new piece by Jay Althaus, I immediately look at it and listen to it. And nine times out of ten, I use it. It's just a wonderful, wonderful composer. is right there in the middle, the blonde girl, or the girl with the blonde hair. And, uh, yeah, right there in the middle of the shot.
uh, meditate to this song. No, actually, I'm just kidding. was the zombie jamboree cool zombies are all the rage these days you see lots of shows about zombies
been uh, composed around Dona Nobis Pace, which means grant us peace, which I think is particularly appropriate around this time and with all that's going on. Um, most Dona Nobis Pace pieces are ethereal, reverent, which is why I kind of like this one. <laughs> because this one is joyous, exuberant, and boisterous, and a lot of fun to sing, I must say. It was written by the great Austrian composer, uh, Josef Haydn, and it is from his Orgelmesse, which means organ mass, and so for our final piece, Dona Nobis Pace. <coughs> song the alumni come out from the audience and join the current students
turkey time, but yeah, well done concert. They have a great music teacher, and <laughs> the students are talented uh, themselves, to be sure. Uh, back in the day, I went to St. Martha Elementary School, and Sister Fabiola taught fourth grade, and any time like we sang, uh, I guess she, my voice stood out. She said, I have a complex to this day about it, but she says I had a monotone voice. So I haven't quite gotten over that one, but uh, I'm in therapy. Here you can eat healthy. You can see the options there. This is not the, the best option. I think I had 13 in there. You're allowed that. The baker's dozen, but um, who's counting? I think I was pretty good, but the crowd gathering here, they had two tables of cookies. It was $10 a box. And, uh, so they're going for it. But yeah, well done performance. Uh, my, my niece, Lucy, she really loves her music class. And so she's got, a, well, it's kind of an elective also, but the whole school still gets involved musically. It's a very artistic school, this Rudolf Steiner. Here the soft lighting, banking off those white uh, platforms, so not direct light. I like this black globe. Then I think there's a uh, middle school or grade school here. They had some art projects uh, done up on the wall. So this was Whitmore Lake now. All right, well, that concludes that so that was enjoyable that puts you in the christmas mood a little bit i bought this guy or this dvd from a guy right on grand river and so I, i'm gonna put it in there <laughs> So I'm playing this uh, CD. Uh, it has five tracks on it. It sounded pretty good. It's just every now and then I you had to watch for the N word. So what I speak is survival the government can't supply you with loans from police and school to self educate you. Who will stand before the waste of the system eradicate you? One third of the restaurants in the ghetto crack is on the pile. <laughs> Yeah, this music might actually work where I can play it in the background. Uh, when you put stuff up on YouTube, they sometimes will say copyright infringement if you have in the background like radio music and that kind of thing. So, uh, but somebody that's trying to get their name out there, and this obviously is a Detroit group, and I'll give them street cred for their marketing, but yeah, maybe I'll play this for background. Okay, so I parked the focus just for a second because this one billboard caught my eye along with this building. First, we'll look at the murals or the paintings on this abandoned building. A nice, well, nice architecture. I like the brickwork and maybe that's Puabic tile up top. It's a little dark, but everyone featured in here, uh, in the front, they'll have a panel telling, here we go, the De Detroit Portrait Series. Okay, so there's everybody that they have featured in this Grand River. We need to get this Grand River back to where it was at. Certainly I-96 siphoned a lot and the riots of 67 uh, really took root a lot on Grand River. And it kind of hasn't quite gotten over that point yet, but a lot of effort certainly with 
uh, Woodward Avenue, Main Street, Detroit. But now we got to focus on the other spokes, like uh, Grand River. Here, born in Detroit, I wanted to see what this was all about. I'm born in Detroit. I don't know what the, the symbolism there is that you're as good as a crash test dummy. Uh, but Humanetics, I guess they're based out in Farmington Hills. And maybe, uh, I believe, if you Wikipedia, they might say they got their start in Detroit. But yeah, born in Detroit. That was um, Grace Hospital back in 1960. Who? I'm going down that slippery slope, and at the bottom is the bucket. It's just happening too fast. But... Before that happens, though, we got to work on Grand River. We'll all get involved in this. It'll be a group effort. Uh, but the first part is understanding uh, what's out there and uh, what the possibilities are. So you kind of have to assess the situation. All right. That's... Um, a church there, Mitch Album has done a lot uh, to help the church out uh, with a roof, too. I'm heading uh, southeast here on Grand River. Now I'm swinging by the LCA Arena. What I'm trying to say is, it's like... In that five and a half million dollar house. Kind of a red light district. The lower cast quarter used to be that district. Uh, but yeah, times they have changed. Now that's all the rage, the, the southern uh, section of the cast corridor. That's a classic name that's not going to go away. I don't think people are going to say the district Detroit too much will be like the Cass Corridor. But anyways, back on Grand River, and I'm going to check this place out. They got parts also. What a cool-looking building here. So I'm at Grand River and 15th, and this is St. Leo's. It was a Catholic church, but a few years back, they combined with St. Cecilia, I think, down the street, and so this uh, church was sold. And there it's like St. Lucas, the 19th. Uh, here's peeking through the doors. Uh, so I believe another church, a different denomination, might have services. Looking across the way, this is, uh, I think it was called Up North. And it's a new housing development. Certainly has like the farm silo look, but, you know, curved in various shapes. This the 4731 Art Gallery, and they kind of started this revival of Grand River in this particular s section, or at least have a lot to do with it. Here next to St. Leo's is New Steps, so that might be a, a program uh, to help people get started. This looks like a, a freeway interchange. But yeah, that 4731 started where they have artwork all over Grand River, well, for a good stretch uh, in this near vicinity. Goes for a couple miles probably anyways. And they get approval from the building owners to put up murals and artwork and, and the like. Malice Green is there. Um, but they get a approval and it kind of brings attention to the building and then you start looking at the other possibilities. And things aren't just white elephants and black holes. They're opportunities to do something. Now you can get artistic with the security grading on the windows. That's nice. And if you look around, you see art everywhere. Yeah, the church, it, you know, it needed some maintenance to be sure, but what an impressive building. Ah, I'm going to have to use part of this. Uh, I won't get through all of this. Next week's show, I'll continue 
this all because I'm getting near the top of the hour. But look at these things here. Some of those are like two units. Some are even, I think, three. But they have that. Oh, look, Christmas tree. I'm just checking out the neighborhood because uh, Grand River. Yeah, a pile of gravel here. So there might be some urban farming or something going down. But look how big St. Leo's is. And then the magnet radiator, they're doing work on that building. That's where I parked. And I'm going to go into the warehouse in a little bit. And I'm going to buy a door. Here was a previous business, but they tore the building down. I'm wondering if it was a gas station, possibly. But Grand River and Warren. This, I like this advertisement. I think they changed their name to Tacoin. But they have this rocket ship, and I have like a rocket ship like that. Kind of just like that without the ladder, but it's made out of a bowling pin. It's really cool. I'll show that. That'll be it uh, next week's show. This an abandoned bank building. These things should not be vacant. Oh, what a cool building. Is it not? I mean, you don't have to have the typical house, you know, cookie cutter house. <laughs> you could have an original. Some, you know, these old bank and these old firehouses, there's so many cool projects that can be done in Detroit. So I don't know what the story is what that building is but there's got to be a way to find out then unfortunately on this side of the building it looks like people that may have died all too young or maybe the the one person i'm not sure what the whole story was there but grand river folks thanks for watching uh and take care good night